common properties of plastics in terms of their structure. Well, a plastic is a polymer that's molded or extruded. Looking at these general properties and the chemical reason for these properties, well, the first is they're non-toxic, pretty unreactive, they have very strong bonds. But the problem with that is they mostly aren't biodegradable because of these strong bonds. There isn't anything in the environment necessarily that can break them down that easily. They're flexible. Well, hold on. Now it says weak bonds. Well, between the long chains of these polymers, there tend to be weaker bonds, and these bonds can make and break quite easily, so it gives it flexibility. Uh, and they're durable well, because the strong bonds within the carbon chains, that's where the strength is. These seem kind of counterintuitive compared to what I said about non-toxic, but let's just roll with it. They're cheap, the fossil fuels though, they're heavily subsidized. Uh, and the other reason they're cheap is because they make an enormous amount of these plastics, economy of scale. So there's a con about the fossil fuels there. And also uh, single use, they're so cheap that people use them once and throw them into a landfill. They have low density, most of them float on water for example, and that's because carbon and hydrogen have low molar masses. And those chains are quite weakly held together, which kind of gives it a lower density as well. There's less mass per unit volume. Uh, having carbon and hydrogen, as well as chlorine and some other things, means that when you burn them, it is going to be quite polluting in the sense that you've got carbon dioxide, climate change and all that. But then when the plastic melts, it forms many, many different chemicals, uh, not just carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide, carbon and, and water. There's a whole bunch of other nasty chemicals produced when they're burnt. And they're good electrical and thermal insulators because they have no freely moving charged particles. Uh, the valence electrons are locked in bonds between the carbons and the hydrogens, for example. They can't, they're not free to move around. Three specific ones. Well, let's look at Kevlar. That's in stab proof or bulletproof clothing. There's the monomer of Kevlar. So there are two uh, sections of the polymer Kevlar I put close together. And let's look at the intermolecular forces between these two chains. Well, you can see there's hydrogen bonding here and here and here. Hydrogen bonding is the strongest intermolecular force. And so that's going to give Kevlar a lot of its strength. Now recall that uh, this is not a hydrogen bond. It's tempting to say that's a hydrogen bond. No, that's a, that's a covalent bond there. A hydrogen bond is an intermolecular force. And it's formed because the nitrogen is slightly negative, leaving the hydrogen slightly positive. On the other end, I've got slightly negative hydrogen, uh, nitrogen, slightly positive hydrogen. And there's going to be that hydrogen bond there, intermolecular force. You might also notice that there's some dipole-dipole as well. Dipole-dipole bonding, which is the second strongest form of intermolecular force. This oxygen's a little negative, it has more electronegativity than the carbon, and on and on. And so now I'm going to have some dipole-dipole bonding here as well. So that's the two strongest forms of intermolecular force. A weaker plastic is polychloroethene. And here there's no hydrogen bonding, but there is some dipole-dipole. Chlorine has a higher electronegativity than carbon, and hydrogen has a lower electronegativity than carbon. And so what you're going to get is some dipole-dipole bonding here. And there's some more dipole-dipole going on there. So dipole-dipole is weaker than hydrogen bonding, and so therefore polychloroethene is going to have a subsequent uh, properties that are weaker. You're going to use them for gutters and shoes. You're not going to use them for bulletproof, stab-proof armour. And on to the final one, which is polyethene, polythene. So here there's no hydrogen bonding. I don't see an N attached to an H, an O attached to an H, or an F attached to an H that would give me hydrogen bonding. And since the electronegativity of carbon and hydrogen they're different, but they're still pretty close together. There is no dipole-dipole attraction here. And anyway, you've got uh, hydrogen next to hydrogen, so there's going to be no dipole there. 
So what's the intermolecular force? Well, you're going to be left with London dispersion forces, which is the weakest of all the intermolecular forces. And so that's why polythene uh, has its properties. You can use it for toys and containers. Uh, it's not strong enough really to use as shoes and definitely not strong enough to stop you being stabbed. Specific natural polymers. Uh, there doesn't seem to be much detail needed here. Spider silk, well that's similar to Kevlar. Uh, if you've not heard the uh, story of spider goats, I would advise you go and look it up right now. That's kind of fun. And glucose can polymerize to form starch, cellulose or glycogen. That seems to be important. I've read that in some of the textbooks. And proteins, well that's used for hair, nails and muscles. And we're done. No animal was harmed in the making of this video.